Okay, so I've had a cup of tea, and I'm ready to start playing some Lumeris with you guys. We've talked about the differences in the uh, in the game pretty substantially, so let's kind of see where we are and uh, what kind of galaxy we're in. So we're in a two-arm spiral galaxy. We're in the middle of the second arm, so that means that we're likely to have one more uh, AI, possibly two, but most likely one out here um, with a constellation that will run roughly this way and then a widening constellation that will run this way towards a bunch of minor civilizations in the center here. Uh, that's the last thing that I think that I should mention is uh, is that with the changes to diplomacy um, and the changes to approval minor civilizations have actually gotten a lot better. Um, and then we'll talk about one other really minor change, which is that I used to rely a lot on manpower for some races in the in the early game, um, and minor races now give a lot less manpower, which is impactful but small. So we're going to start the way that we've often started in the past, which is taking our hero Yelchin, assigning him to a fleet here, and we're going to probe these three things. So analytical engine, that's not bad. Plus one dust per system uh, ever, or on, per curiosity ever discovered. That's an interesting first one. All right. So molten springs is a really nice one. And 50 science. Deserted cities on the ice planet. All right. Okay, and so we're going to start with xenolinguistics, as we often do. We have that boost to science that we just got, which is nice, because instead of eight turns, it's six. Um, and then we're going to... So we just used all three of our probes on this caravel, right? So now we have to decide where we want to go with our remaining one. Hmm. So I want to find good places to colonize pretty early. So what I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to take one down this route. Oh, that's a minor civilization. Nice. One down this route. And then I'm going to take my hero and we're going to modify his ship. So ship modifications actually have a, uh, a much lower cost than they used to for, for changing how, a sh how the ship works. Um, so let's keep that in mind as well as we move forward. So we're going to pull that out. Minimums now are 30 dust, which is pretty low. And so for 77 dust out of our 300, we can upgrade him to get him uh, four, uh, four probes, which allows him to get a lot of curiosities. Uh, and I think we're going to even penny pinch a little bit and throw away some of his weapon units so that we keep it at 40, because early dust is super important to us. So, we do that. And then he's got seven moves, so we're just going to throw him out over here. And Lumeris are just excellent, excellent early explorers. Last thing we're going to do on turn one is check over here to see what our, yep, what our challenge is. So Seeker of Truths is our challenge, which is the first to search out ten curiosities. So we're going to definitely want to to be doing a good job with that. Um, and then the last thing here is that we've got a long tail of a. Um, of the second spiral arm over there, and no sign of a constellation this way. 
yet. So often um, I like to just throw one probe out here to see if we find an arm of a constellation. It can just be pretty useful. Um, and we can colonize with Lumeris what I call off-piste colonization. Last thing, do we want a um, an early law? I don't think we do. So, as you can see, if we have if we have a system approval of 70, which gives us 10 extra, 10 percent extra food industry or food influence, 15 gold, 15 science, um, and so. I don't need to boost this to the 25 from Ecstatic with Toys for Boys because I need my, um, yeah, I need my system industry production for sure. Um, nor do I want to kill it for 15 extra dust. So we're just gonna call it a day there. And as usual, my first turn takes forever when I'm explaining everything, but I'm kind of trying to do this video because I know that there are probably a lot of people who haven't uh, been playing the game for a year um, who might be watching the channel so I'm going to try to I don't know, treat this as a bit of an introduction to the game all over again um, and we may even turn this into a first 30 turns expert guide since I'm going to do a lot of explanations so we discovered the Mavros Mavros have an excellent excellent, excellent um, integration uh, or assimilation trait. Uh, so if you assimilate them into your system by either conquering them or impressing them, then all future improvements have a 10% subtracted industry cost, which is awesome. Um, they provide more science than other factions, and how about that? They've got uh, yeah, and then as individuals, they also give extra industry. So they're one of my favorites in the early game. Um, let's take a look at their system. So they have a desert, ice, snow, and okay. So let's start out by moving our ship along. All right, so our captain over here, he found just one little place, this arid here. sad for him, but more dust trees. So the fact that this is a second arid with a tree of worlds on it, wow, that tells us something important um, about what we should be doing as far as getting our first um, our first planet colonization tech, right? Because we have to choose which ones to go after first, and arids are over here with PevScale accelerators, which Right now, it costs 150 science, which, you know, yuck, since we're getting 18, 18 per turn, uh, but we're going to be boosting that pretty quickly. Um, also, we've leveled up our our boy Yeltsin here, Yelchin. Um, and usually what I do in the early game is just giving him, it's actually slightly lower, I think it used to be 2020, and they nerfed it to 15, 15, um, but getting Blue Sky Speculator so that he can give a nice science buff when he goes and becomes the governor, still a very good plan. All right, so then we've got these caravels here. And now these caravels are a little bit fragile. So what I want to do here is say like, okay, let's spend our 34 dust and we can, actually I'm pretty sure that we can't throw this in, that'll be up to 45, yeah. Um, so with 34 dust, we can basically refresh the probes and give them one extra movement speed. So I'm gonna apply that design and then upgrade both of these puppies so that number one will go over here and we can we have to upgrade them now because we have to do that in our sphere of influence um, and then finally what I'm going to do here is so before I 
do these curiosities because when I explore curiosity, it'll start improving the diplomatic relations. That actually improves the cost of bribery here. Um, I wonder if development grants have been nerfed. We'll have to explore that later. Uh, that I don't want to start the curiosity exploration until I have begun my bribery. So I'm actually going to do a hundred dust in the early game, which is a lot, to get plus four. Um, and then I'm going to do the three curiosities here. Extra science, some super spuds, and some extra science. Wow, so we have Xeno and three. Um, almost makes me wonder if we should... Because we're not going to be able to build. So there's this concept I've talked about in uh, in some of the other videos called tact, um, where if you're not going to use a technology right away, there's no reason to be researching that technology. Um, and in fact, um, yeah, so you want to like get a technology right when you're going to use it, spend gold right when it's necessary to use it, because otherwise you should be spending that technology, or the science points, the dust, whatever, on something different that you are going to use. And so what I'm thinking here is that I know that we want to get this PEV scale accelerators, right, to colonize our arids as soon as we can. Um, and so given that we just got a surplus of 37 science from those things, I'm thinking we may actually want to jump here and, and do a bit of work on our PEV scale accelerators um, while we're building our cerebral reality and our drone network. Hmm. Let's actually reconsider that because Right now, I'm going to be finishing Cerebral Reality in three. Drone networks will then take four more. If I do Xeno Industrial, I'll finish Xeno Linguistics in three as well. And then instead of drone networks, I'll be able to jump directly into building my Xeno Industrial infrastructure on this planet, which I think is better. Um, that's more important. And since I spent so much dust early on, which, by the way, I can't spend any more dust. We need to rebuild our dust stores in order to get a uh, in order to get a good um, a good couple of colonies set up in the early game. So, I'm going to be taking Yelchin down that way, which means I'm going to just go ahead and throw off one or two. I think two additional probes to just keep on exploring out here. We'll save one because we have to get as many um, as many curiosities with him as possible. But he regenerate, he's going to regenerate them pretty fast. So, And then, as I said before, we revealed three curiosities, so that's going to give us um, three. Praising them uh, is giving us four a turn, so we're at plus seven overall, and you see that the cost of bribing went way up. So it went 25, 75, and then it would have been 125 to do a third one. But because I did three curiosities, it increased each of those things by 25, and to bribe them again, it would be 200. So we saved ourselves some dust and got more impact out of it. Okay. Uh, last thing is this guy. So for him, this is a really good question. Do we want to go down here, where we don't know exactly what's up? Do we want to go over here where he can kind of assist with Yelchin? I think we're going to send him down here. There's bound to be something interesting. That's just a gut feeling call. Oh, hey. So we found Yedix, Steps, Ice, Ice. So I would say that from a start perspective, we have not seen anything particularly good for us here, right? Um, no other tier zero planets anywhere around. The Hisho over here, which have hunting culture, plus 20% damage on weapon modules, also a fantastic integration. Um, who we've now met. Ugh. 
how many how many curiosities do they have? Just one. All right, let's explore the rest of the way here. These guys have four. All right, that's good news for us. It means we might hit our uh, hit our cap this turn. Influence, dust, spuds, and sure enough, we got our ten curiosities, which gives us a seventy-five Hyperium. That's going to be really nice in the early game, by the way. Very nice indeed. Okay. Meanwhile, this guy now has seven moves, and he'll be getting a, his first or his next probe the following turn. So we're just going to send him out to explore. Hmm. And then we have a real pickle, because we haven't seen anything impressive. This is another steps here. I mean, 230 dust to do our first colony. So do we do 25 to just start making friends with the he show? I think we do. Um, although, let's be pragmatic about this, because there's this other group over here, the remnants. Okay. We're also not bad. We'll contact them for sure as well. Interesting. They have a lot more curiosities there. Three. Uh, any interesting ones? Life forms? No. But they have so arids, lava, savanna. These guys have this forest planet, which I kind of like. So if I were being pragmatic here, I would start thinking about, okay, I need to be a bit um, hoardy. <laughs> I need to hoard my gold. So who am I going to be friends with, and who am I going to conquer militarily? These guys, I'm already well on my way to being friends with. I made a substantial advantage, uh, a substantial investment in them. Here, if I spend 25 gold and discover one curiosity, it actually is a pretty nice investment. It'll give me um, three influence for uh, for 10 turns, so actually it ends up being a total of 27, not 30, but that'll get me into the first tier with them. Um, and so this suggests to me that there might actually be something to this. So I'm going to make a controversial decision here and um, actually be laying the groundwork for both of these. So it's been 50 dust here. And and the, the vision that I have for this is that once we get a few of these guys on our side, because the dust bonuses that the minor civilizations give are so substantial, we'll also check this out. Wow, five curiosities over here. All right, so we're going to send Yelchin up that way for sure to start farming some experience. Because he, he definitely needs some more. Okay. Um, yeah, that once that starts farming up, it'll be worth the investment of, you know, overall I've only invested 150 dust into the into the sieves here. Okay. Let's end the turn. See what we've got. Turkana, five system place with ooh. What have we got? Strange fossils and likely a Hyperium. Yep. Well that my friends, that changes a lot of things. Having a five planet thing with something this good. Um so that's an average titanium deposit, 
and an average Hyperion deposit, so probably three. Um, that changes a lot, because we really want to be able to exploit that. Okay, so it's two turns until it's cooldown, so we're going to save that other curiosity. Same for you, I think. So we're going to bring you over here. Yep. So he'll have two next turn and keep gaining them. We've got he's got five more turns until his upgrade. Or sorry, not until his upgrade, until he's ready to relocate. Um, and then <clears throat> in two turns we'll start getting our first rewards from Zubin. So hopefully that will have been worth it. And because yeah, we're at plus seven for ten turns, um, we'll actually get above 50 relationship with them and actually be able to trigger the assistance quest, which was my objective there. All right, and we've got 80 Hyperium. <clears throat> so let's get our Xenolinguistics going. Okay, so we talked about PEV scales before. Um, the question is, do we really want PEV scales? So 150 versus 180. I think we still want the PEV scales first. Oh, right. So I always take Omicar here. Um, assimilating a minor sieve is just really hard. So we'll continue to take Omicar as our quest line. Done. Okay, and just as we planned, we'll build Xeno Industrials, which will give us plus 30 industry here. The PEV scale accelerators, by the way, one of the reasons I'm choosing it is it gives us two things. One is the ability to colonize this arid here, um, which gets us our dust trees, some dust trees, and second is the one to get this arid, which will turn into a system really fast because of the Tree of Worlds. That's going to give such a huge uh, food boost, which is what uh, outpost growth is based on. So, let's jump in here. Um, Whenever possible, I like to save. So those are three atmospherics and then a signal in ruins. And you should always go for the signal in ruins first. They're often populations and other, like in modules like this one, um, which can be really good. Oh, the location of Bilgeli. A Terran with Bilgeli. Well, 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 well. All right, so what have we got here? A boreal with slip gates, which is additional trade value, and titanium. Okay, so this is the part where we say to ourselves, shit, right? We need cash now. And yeah, we're generating a decent amount, but just decent, not a great amount. So we really want, oh, these are all life forms. Okay, we'll throw it on the arid. We really want cash, cash, cash. And so how do we get cash? <clears throat> the main way to do it at this stage of the game is to get up to galactic commodities. So now that we've, this is my, my normal um, second, uh, second tech. And so now that we've got some places to target, over here that we don't need the arid for right away, the arid and the tundra, although those are both fine planets. Um, I'm going to start moving in that direction immediately, and then I'm going to be able to sell off all of this Hyperium, as well as the dust trees, to get a huge um, spike of gold, and then we're going to use that to settle. And we're going to settle a bunch of places at once in really quick succession to, um, to build up our empire. All right, so they're now cordial with us, so they can repair and retrofit, and they also start giving us a little something something. So we're up to six and six dust, seven science, just from the first one. So if you think about it, we invested a hundred 
dust into these guys. And so, you know, you can just do the math. It'll take <coughs> um, six times seven, I guess, so 17 turns to repay back at this, at this stage. But in four more turns, they'll be up at 50. And it'll rise again, and we'll check in with them once more. OK. So let's move. Ooh, we've got another settleable planet over here. This monsoon. All right, so subterranean, atmospheric, ruins. So like I said before, we're always exploring the ruins first. Plasmoid shielding. It's a pretty solid shielding module. All right. Yeah, so this is a really slow start. Turn six, not having anything, is normally what I would think of as like unacceptably slow. By the way, I'm going to move this guy here, hoping that this isn't too long of a trip, so that I can go and come back and get the last two curiosities on that planet. But we'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, I've got plenty more to do here. Although with three atmospherics, I almost want to save those. Um, the thinking is that you save them for when we have the academy seeking quest, uh, and then you need to get five, um, five atmospheric curiosities. And so just having a guy go up here and be sitting there with with three probes means that you can get those five cur or the you know a bunch of the curiosities, a bunch of the atmospheric curiosities, really fast. So I'm going to save those as a store. Um, oh, and it's been so long, I forget when the Academy quest triggers. I'll have to remember later. Alright, and so we've got a little triangle here, and this is a dead end. So this is going to be a great place for me to be like, this will be the s center of my power, basically. We have these really nice, this really nice little um, monsoon planet here, a nice steps, um, as well as some industry planets. We have the cold groups over here with this really nice tundra. So I'm happy to think of these four as it's, I'm hopefully going to be able to assimilate this guy as my core of power, and then this group over here as my expansion of power. And this is the, the arid. Yeah, so that one is also going to be critical. Yep, so I have a nice little constellation, and I'm not too crowded right now, which is also nice. So it's a slow start, but I think it's going to be a good one. At least I'm not embarrassing myself too badly, let's put it that way. So that's an exploration ship, yeah. So we've got our subterranean and a couple of atmospherics here. There's a titanium, shattered crust and influence. <coughs> so, hmm. So, so, so. The question that we have here is that Bilgeli is an excellent planet, by the way. If you are new to the game, <clears throat> these named planets that aren't just like the system name with a number after it, uh, they give enormous bonuses on top of what the a normal savanna would be. So you see like each population here gives eight food instead of four, five influence instead of zero, and so on. So that, that planet type in the lower left hand corner, those are all the special extras that, that it gets on top of what it would normally be. So. Um, colonizing this place now is really worth something valuable. On top of that, it's got super spuds and titanium, an average titanium deposit. So given that I just found the unfallen over here, um, this seems like a perfectly acceptable place to start my, um, my empire right cuz it like pushes out a little bit and then i can build backwards and that's one of the big advantages of the lumeris actually so yeah given the option of my that boreal over here which is also nice um 
Yeah, this tunneled slip gates titanium. I definitely am going to want that one. But by taking this one, again, thinking strategically, um, with the unfallen next to me, the unfallen have to move one system by one system. So it's not like they can bypass me and take Soydan. Um, so I'm going to start with Nuskan. Here, Nusakan. Hooray, hooray. All right, and so they're going to take 28 food a turn from Wardan, so Wardan basically stops growing. But luckily, they're still going to have just enough to grow and get a new population next turn. So that's nice. All right, now where are my ships? You're at zero. Moves. You made it down here, nice. Um, take a look at what these things are. Life form, atmospheric, atmospheric. Wow, so many atmospheric curiosities. Also remember, I have the analytical engine that I'm going to build at some point, which will give me extra dust for every curiosity I've ever discovered. So when we go into like the victory screen here, we can see how many curiosities. Um, somewhere. Oh, we used to. Here we go, score. Number of curiosities. So we already discovered 18. So if we build that building, it's already giving us 18 extra uh, dust to turn. Which is kind of neat. So, let's also just talk to this guy briefly. So, early on, the most valuable thing that we can ask of him is his map. Okay, but he doesn't want to share that with us. So why don't we start with... Ooh, interesting. He does not want to give us... I'm going to offer peace. Okay. They're not into it. It's okay, though, because... As I said in the introduction, peace is way less important now for Lumeris than it used to be. So, how many turns has he got left? One turn. Oh, I have not done a good job. getting him exploration points. But just in time. Just in time. So now he's leveled up, level 3, so he'll get plus 30 science, and now we'll be rolling when we assign him to his new position back home. Um, do you think that he'll be able to discover one more place before going out? It's kind of a risk. We might lose a turn of his activity. But I don't think that this can be that far <laughs> until it's... yeah, it's got to be like right there. So I'm going to follow this um, unfallen ship down this way. And hopefully he'll reach that next turn. But we'll see. And this guy has got a probe back, so we're going to look at the subterranean on the monsoon, since that's the one we're going to want to colonize. A little Hyperium over there, not bad, not bad. All right. Now we're getting titanium every turn because we're on that average titanium deposit. Yep. Okay, and we have our marketplaces in two turns, so that's going to be nice. Oh, and I didn't quite th get there. Almost. Ooh ton more curiosities. Look at this. Unbelievably huge number of them. Alright. 
So for this guy, we're going to want to like bring him down here or something. Give him some time to regenerate his uh, his probes. We can leave a couple of them undone. We'll get them. We'll get to them later. And then this guy has two left. Yep, just as we planned. So now those can go in here. Ooh, some transvine and some dusty trees. Great. Um, and they improve the growth rate on the diplomatic relations here. So total plus five, which is meh meh meh, not great, because it won't get all the way to a hundred, um, but or to fifty, but it's still not terrible. All right. So then with two remaining, we're gonna send him down into the unknown. Now this, the structure of this uh, constellation is a bit unusual here. It should be at forty-nine. Yeah. So next turn we'll actually be able to offer assistance, which will be cool. And we'll have our commodities exchange. So, now back to the technology screen. Is PevScale Accelerators where we want to go? I think the answer to that is yes. Tree of Worlds? is going to be super important because we want an active second colony because we don't have any off-piste colonization here. Um, let's talk about that briefly for you guys that are, are new to the game. We'll get back to the Mavros in a second. So Lumeris, as you guys have probably seen, they have a special colonization ability where they don't need a colony ship. They instead just click on the, um, on the planet that they want to colonize, pay dust, and boom an outpost appears there. That means that you don't need these star lanes to get to your outposts in the early game. If we had just, say, um, thrown a probe over here to Virac and found their arid planet, let's pretend we could colonize arids, then we could just throw a colony there for dust without even seeing this star lane and this star lane. And what that would mean is really, really important. So when we go to this outpost now, you see that um, Wardan is sending growth via automated ships to the outpost. I can't select no, um, like select no, I don't want a ship, right? And that means that the food from Wardan is enormously drained. It takes 31 Point 0.7 food from Wardan to send it to an outpost. And if I do a second colony, it's going to send another 31.7. This is a massive problem. A massive problem because it means that my capital actually shrinks if I have if I'm trying to colonize two places at once. So doing this off-piste colonization it's called is just fantastic. Um, it allows you to get a second, third, fourth outpost without draining your capital. Um, yeah, so really, really, really strong. And we did not get that at all in this time because we've, because this whole place is connected by, uh, connected together and the couple of th probes that we threw out didn't lead anywhere, didn't give us anything special. So. We're going to go here and check out our, uh, use our two remaining probes to get some additional experience, check out a couple of these curiosities, more Transvine and Hyperium on that Tundra, and then because we can reassign our boy Yelchin, we're going to do it. Also, speaking of tact, I wanted to get him in here before finishing Xeno Industrial Infrastructure because that will give a nice experience boost. So we can, we'll just check up on him. Like right now he's at 18 out of 75. We'll put him in here, then we'll finish Xeno Industrial and see where he is after that. We're then gonna go for, going to go for drone networks because we really wanna get more food. Food's gonna be super important for us as a theme over the next little bit. All right, next up, send this guy back. Now I told you we would return to the Mavros. So it jumps from plus six dust and plus eight um, 
science. And now we've jumped all the way to 18 a turn. So that 100 investment that we made gets is going to be repaid pretty fast. So we've already gotten 24 back from it from the last four turns. And now we're getting 18 a turn. So in uh, in basically four more turns, we will have gotten our reward back completely, plus all of this science as a bonus. <clears throat> On top of that, we can assist them with the assimilation. Oh, that's a tough one. Raise militarist support to 30% in two systems. Yikes. Not so good for pacifist nation. We may end up having to conquer them the hard way. Lastly, we finished our marketplace this turn. So we have all of this Hyperium, which is worth 21 dust per. So by selling that 90 Hyperium and this Titanium, look at that. We have 1.4 thousand dust, and we got to start using this. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to boost the um, the output of, uh, of Nusaken so that it becomes a colony as quickly as possible. Secondly, we have to make a tough decision here. Um, and this is actually a really interesting strategic one to me. The tough decision that we have to make is now, in two turns, we're going to have the option to well, so like right now we could make another system, right? We could colonize Soldan, for example, which has six food and is going to take forever to colonize. I don't love that idea because it's going to pull another 30 food, 32 food here from Wardan. And so we're going to be losing 20, uh, 20 system er, stock, food stock per turn. And that's a problem for us, right? We don't want to lose 20 food stock per turn because then we'll shrink and we'll lose a population in two turns and then just keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. However, two turns from now, when we have the ability to colonize Arids, colonizing Leo 1 that has the Tree of Worlds, that's going to go so quickly um, that we may even be able to stomach losing a population in Wardan here or there in order to colonize the Tree of Worlds. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second, but I think that that's a decision that I normally wouldn't make unless I had that Tree of Worlds option there. Uh, so I think it's quite, quite an interesting situation. Oh, a couple of pirate layers spawned on turn 10. And we've got our remnants, who are our pals now. And a new colonizable place. Mediterranean down here with more rich soil. That's really nice. More titanium plus Hyperium. So we're really, really in a good spot regarding the core resources of titanium and Hyperium. Okay. So, um, let's see, now where do I want to go here? I think around turn 15 is when the academy quest will start. So now that I don't have guys over here anymore, uh, because I removed my, uh, my hero ship uh, to go become a governor, I kind of want to have one of my caravels sitting around Yedix for those atmospheric curiosities. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let him run over there. Meanwhile, I'm happy to check out this atmospheric here. Get a little bit of extra dust, fine. Um, and I told you we were going to check in with Yelchin again, so yeah, he gained an additional... Oh, they've really reduced it, actually. So he only gained, what, he was at 18 before, so 11 XP from finishing the Xeno Industrials? That's not so much, actually. All right, and then we're going to build our drone networks, and then we'll probably also build a caravel after that. And our 
drone network finishes in two, which is actually very nice. Okay. So, we finished our PEV scales. Where are we going to go from here? I'm thinking of a couple interesting things. But one of the most interesting is um, the planetary landscaping. Just because I think food's going to be important early on, because we have done this, uh, we have this on piste expansion plan. And having a sustainable farm in, for example, our capital will probably allow us to maintain, along with the drone networks, two, um, two outposts simultaneously. Alternative ideas are that we should get xenobiology um, to unlock tundras. But remember we talked about wanting to be on, oh, that's nice. We talked about wanting to be on tact. So the question is, will we be making a tundra colony or a or a uh, public-private partnership? And actually, I think we will be making a public-private partnership pretty soon. Um, I like getting onto that arid faster than rather than slower. All right. So let's talk about a couple other decisions. We talked about this one before with the Tree of Worlds. Um, finish drone networks in one turn. How much have I got extra here? So I'm sending out now doo -doo -doo, 32 still. And I've got 55 stored up. So when I go to minus 22 here, I'll get two turns free. But it might even be a little bit more than that, because I'm about to get 10 extra food there. So I'm going to end up losing a population. But as you can see, because this, is, this has so much food because of the Tree of Worlds, when I boost this guy here, it actually colonizes in only six turns, which is fast, unbelievably fast. So we're going to let that happen. And you see now we're losing food here, 22 a turn, because we're losing 63 a turn from our outposts. Yikes. OK, meanwhile, a uh, couple of things here. This has halted completely because it's re reached its maximum. So we want to kickstart that again with another two, which will get it up to 100, allowing us to potentially acquire them. Meanwhile, we put only a small amount into these guys. So that expires in one turn. We're going to let it expire. And then same here. We're going to let it expire so that the cost here comes down. Um, and then give them a little boost again. Finally, we have to decide what we're going to do. And I think that after mulling it over, xenobiology seems like the choice. We can also do it in one turn, which is fantastic. The next important things on our list, planetary landscaping, as I said, I think is going to be nice, but not critical. Um, let's look at our dust stores. So we have 20 dusty trees right now. Not very many. We really want more. Where are the dusty trees here? Are they on Leo? OK, yeah, so we're going to be getting two a turn from Leo now. All right, and we want to cancel this so that our industry will actually spill over into whatever we build next. And we don't waste that. OK. I don't know this is going OK. I think what we're actually going to want to end up conquering the Kisho militarily. That's my thought here. It also gives us a reason to uh, make a... Uh, make a force at some point. OK. Let's let this guy go to next turn. So now we can get our tundra. We're going to go back to this. 
figure out where we want to be. So this one's always nice, right? Applied Happiness Program gives extra approval on all planets. Um, hmm. But what I'm really thinking here is that just grabbing planetary landscaping will be a substantial boon for us. Botanical scanning also, of course, is great. Plus 20% food, crop seeding, and so on. Um, but the sustainable farms are just so much more affordable that my gut feeling is to go there. Yeah, we don't really need baryonic shielding yet. How important is colonizing snow to us? This is an ice. Toxic, yuck. Hmm. All right. Let's see where we are. So, we're now... Oh, nice! This is actually something that they fixed. So with three ships in transit, um, now it doesn't reduce the food anymore because there's not a ship that's needing to be sent out. This is actually a fix from the way it used to work. That's awesome. That means I'm not losing population anymore. So we didn't even lose one from Wardan. That means it was definitely the right call to do what we did. That means we'll have two more colonies in six turns. Are they both in six, or are you in five? You're in five. So that means four turns from now, we want to go on a colonization spree for reasons that I'll talk about four turns from now. And we're going to take our public-private partnerships and get those in four turns, followed up with a colony. All right, and as far as research goes, yeah, I think we're not going to use planetary landscaping soon enough, so I may... Let's see, we have 20 dust trees. Sorry for going over this again. I'm new to, new to the game again. So 20 dust trees means in three turns we'll have our 25, um, which means that we can make our capital a level 2 system with dust trees. And that'll give plus 60 dust a turn to it. So that's probably the most valuable thing that we can do right now. So then we just have to choose which one we want, which is almost always Xenotourism, I think is my favorite. The buyouts, I, I don't use them that much. Um, yeah, and the ash colonization, meh, just not valuable enough. And then we'll have to come backwards to get our interplanetary transport depot. Nope, I forgot to spend dust on these guys here. Alright. So now they're at 75 with us, giving us 36 and 60 science a turn. So, hooray, right? They're giving us so much stuff right now. Meanwhile, these guys... Hmm. Do we want to spend 50 to boost them? I think that we can wait for those guys. And then just spend the 100 here to get them to get them to 50. Because these guys, will they make it to 50 by themselves? No, I don't think that they will. They'll make it to 45 by themselves. Because it says Curiosity is revealed for 5, but in reality we did this in two jumps, right? So <clears throat> one is going to fall off in the next couple of turns, and then the remaining two will push on until five turns. But because I had a total of plus five, right, I did one bribe, three curiosities, that affects nine times, so the, the end result should end up being 45. Although, it's five turns. Maybe I'll be surprised. Um, maybe they fixed that too, like the last application of it. So that it's actually 50 instead of 45 now. Oh, the Hisho are going to fight me. You guys are like my pals. What's going on there? All right, well, I retreated in the right direction anyway. 
They're just a bit militaristic. Alright, and these guys are really driving my empire forward. As you can see from my science, check that out. I'm getting more science from my minor civilizations than I am from my systems. Although that might change once I get public-private partnerships. But we're going to be able to fly through the early, um, the early tech tree, which is awesome. So here we are, turn 15. Academy might come turn 20? I don't remember. I'm too bad at this game. Alright, and then we'll check out this snow. More dust trees. Ooh. Increasing scientist political ideology for minus 10 on the empire. Like, paying 100 science for a, for a tech. Always worth it. The fact that we can boost scientists, even better. Okay, and then I want to do something here and just shoot a probe towards the core. All right. So, we'll get Astro Finance next turn. You have your three things. You're going to just sit around waiting for the Academy, um, which means that you should, for now, just see what we can find out in the world. There you go. Look at that. We even found a uh, little black hole. So what have you got here? Is this Steps? Yeah, Steps is the key planet there. So, we'll move on. One of the other things that I want to be aware of, all right, nice for Astro Finance, um, that I want to be aware of is that on turn 20, we'll have elections. Hey, there it is. Of course, I just, just used my probes. It was on turn 15, but it doesn't trigger until turn 16. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Um... Four turns, so we three. Okay, I know what we can do with you. So in four turns, he can get back there. Uh, and we'll just upgrade his probes over Nusakan. Okay. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is that we haven't seen it yet, but one of the important things that I wanted to call out is that at turn 20 we'll have elections, and it's really important for Lumeris to start moving their elections towards uh, industrialists. And so, yeah, so we want to probably spend a substantial amount of gold influencing the elections to put the industrialists in power. Um, as much as we can. And we've done nothing military-ish at all, so so maybe we can even do that. By lobbying for them. Alright, so timing, two turns. So next turn is gonna be our our big turn there. And now we've woohoo unlocked our next stage of uh, economic development here, which means that we can go and get commercial frameworks. Like unlocking trade companies, earlier the better by far. And so nine turns to do that. It's actually going to be less because I'm going to be finishing public privates. And uh, I'm totally down with that. Alright, and then we actually will want you to indeed build a colony there. Not a temperate, so boohoo, but still gonna be good. Um, yeah, so the next turn is when we will want to build new, uh, new 
two colonies. The Oregon Federacy seeks only knowledge. My first time meeting a Volter. Ooh, you own this place. All right, a colonized arid with glitter dust. <sighs> that reminds me. I have something to test. Test to see if it's still broken. Because it certainly was before. All right, so we need to I don't know. We're going to add a no. We're going to change this to missiles. How does that sound? 37. Great. Apply that design. Upgrade you for 200. and then send your butt back here so that you'll have your three probes. Not ideal, but it's okay. Um, okay, now a couple of things we need to do. First of all, ba boom we're gonna make dusty trees our national pride, national pastime, and then yep, do them now with our modernization so that we'll start making 60 dust next turn. Um, our science is uh, super high. The other thing that I'm thinking of, since we're going to try to be colonizing this turn, let's see how much cash we can get. So, everything but the dust trees are useless to us. So we have 1.4. Now, where are our top places to colonize? Let's think about this, because we've got a lot of options. We've got this nice Mediterranean with average and rich soil. So rich soil is solid, because that means it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be able to colonize faster. We can do at least one, possibly two. Oh, and I just wanted to talk about the reason why. So. You see here in the upgrade path, there's this merchants and money thing um, that doubles the speed of natural growth of your outposts. That goes up in cost based on the number of colonies you have. So at one colony, it's 150. At two, the number of systems you own, and it doesn't count your outposts. So at one, it's 150, and then next turn, when we get our second one, this will go up to 250, and then 350 in two turns, and so on. So if I want to be making some additional outposts right now, it's actually very dust efficient for me to do it this turn, uh, as long as I can also upgrade the, use the, spend the 150 on them. So here's another monsoon, monsoon steps. That's not bad. This was that really nice tundra with strange fossils. What else is here? An Arctic with the platform of East. All right. And then we have this pretty nice boreal over here with the star system trade value thing. So that's got six. Let's just look at growth rates. So we've got six there. That's home. Our Tundra Pal is also six. This Monsoon, also six. And this Mediterranean is nine. So that's going to be the fastest growing one. Desert Gas Lava, though, it's like in a pretty unexciting system, and it itself is small close-ish to a pirate base. It's a tough one, honestly. Let's look at this. Oh, I think that they did patch this. Awesome, so it actually does go up to 50 now. That's amazing. Uh, sorry, just so that I don't lose you guys, because it's at 46 right now, and it says Curiosity revealed with two turns left. That suggests to me that like it's not going to end at 45, 
for the plus five that we got overall. It's going to end at 50. So they, they fixed that little programming error that caused that defect, which makes me happy. Um, okay. We definitely want to be preserving our influence points here because we want to buy these guys out sooner rather than later. Hmm, although, then again, I hate to give that up. All right, so we sold everything that we could already. And our two best options are going to be in Soidan and Alioth. Second thing that I wanted to say is we should definitely go ahead and grab the Hyperium if we want to be untacked, because if we get a couple of Hyperium places over the next few turns, we're going to, we're going to want to use them. All right, so let's have our primary one be Alioth, because that's going to colonize the fastest. One, two. And we have to do the 150 upgrade this turn. Right? Like, so I don't think we'll be able to afford this guy anymore, because yeah, now we need 700 for it. Um, and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll get him later, and we'll just have to pay a higher price. So now this guy's back into losing mode, but only for one turn. Great. Outpost turned into a colony. Now we're on four planets as well, so we get 200. Oh, we might be able to afford something. And so then we have to get to 150 per um, turn in one of our systems. So first of all, let's start out here by building, hmm, what do we want? It grows so fast, and it's an arid, so I think we'll build a cerebral reality, because like it doesn't need food, um, and so drone network is less valuable. Xeno industrial doesn't help it, because it's an arid. Um, so we'll just let it grow super, super big, and try to make it as valuable as possible for us, but it's not a fantastic system. It's just nice and fast growing, which is definitely worth something. Um, especially since we can say instead of Wardan, you should pull from Leo. And Leo will barely feel a dent in this, right? They still grow nicely, um, which actually could be a reason to give them some drone networks eventually. But we'll see. Okay, so then here. We're now making 105 a turn in this place. It's got four people. 105, da, 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 da. So we need to boost it a little bit more to get to our plus 150 that we wanted for the next stage. It's also turn 18. So we probably don't want to settle Soilodon yet. Yeah, because we're not going to have the 250 needed. So, by the way, because just to show you guys, we want to do this again now that we have another colony. It's 250. We don't have that 250. Um, and in two turns, I want to actually have a nice chunk of money to pay for the industrialists. So, that's where my mind is right now. Paying for the industrialists. And then next turn, we should be at. Woo, a boosted influence with them and with them. Great. Yeah, and we're not going to be doing a great job with the uh, the getting militarism to our places. All right, so Hyperium. Now you're amicable. another colony. Ooh, we've been marked as the target of a pirate contract. This has never happened to me before, but I find it interesting. 
All right, so here we're at 54.33. So we're going to start out with Xeno Industrial for sure. It'll also be great once we get Bill Gelly, which is going to be pretty important. Next, we should be able to make it here. Excellent. Oh, somebody else got here first. They took my atmospherics. Stolen. Did I leave an atmospheric here too? It did. Still. Bugger. And that's their home base. So let's throw a probe over there and run this way. Hmm, we're not gonna be as impactful as I had hoped. Okay, so then let's start with the assistance here. Just making sure that we don't spend too much. Explore curiosities until you discover the lab. Fine. Generate 160 science in one of my systems. All right. Huh. How can I do that? We'll figure it out. We're creative folks. But I think that's actually a pretty achievable one, which makes me happy. here, let's see, since we're going to be selling, or we're going to be having to use our gold next turn, let's go ahead and just pump out a little bit that we can. Okay, it'll be turn 21. It's the turn after stuff happens. Oh yeah, look at that. Pirates. Wow, 180. They're strong. Stronger than other things that I can do. Hmm. Alright, Wardan. So we definitely want to put our dudes here. We don't have anomalies. Analytical, analytical engine does boost our gold by a lot to help us get to the next uh, quest line stage. But honestly, what I'm thinking here is that it may even be worth it to just go ahead and start building some military. We haven't put much into that yet. So why don't we go ahead and do it? So let's call create a little little guy called a snapper. And and we're just gonna put in an engine. Uh, we didn't get any good fighting modules, but we got a really good manpower module. So we're gonna do that. Shields and missiles. Yeah, and that's like a nice little relatively quick ship. And then we're gonna make, it should be only two turns to make one of these snappers. Nice, so we're gonna make a couple of them. And, uh, and use it to invade guys. So let's see how that goes. Four turns to commercial frameworks. And here we are. So our scientists are basically second leading right now. And our industrialists 
are a little bit behind. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lobby for our industrialists. Scientists have such good laws. I love the scientists, but unfortunately they're not a part of my quest line. Now we have pacifists and industrialists, which means we've taken over here and we convert stuff into dust, um, can boost approval with new colonies and grow faster, and also can uh, get a bunch of bonus industry on strategic resource generations. So, yay, dust windfall. Much better than the pacifist law. Another atmospheric. Is that going to put us over the? Create an outpost on Soilidan Two. Oh, that's your or we did say or colonize the system, or colonize its system. All right, and we got a hundred gold and thirty Hyperium off of our atmospheric curiosities. So then find the academy. That's pretty far down there. Ooh. So we didn't see this before, but there is a way to get an edge into the center. That's why we threw out that one little probe before. All right. Well. Oh, yes, baby. So we've got the influence to do an assimilation here. Um which we definitely will. I think, right? Like it does kill our manpower a little bit. There's only 3 people on this place. Oof. Do we want to? Like this is not an exciting Hmm. It's not an exciting uh system. Let's test something else out instead. Instead of assimilating them, which by the way has a great benefit, right? If we assimilate them, it's minus 10% industry on all of our buildings. Yeah. Super, super, super good. But I'm actually kind of more curious right now if we can purchase 15 dark glitter and see how this goes up. So 4060 with development grants. Yeah, it's still crazy. <laughs> 150, 230. 230! To our science! Ah! Unbelievable. Okay, well that's pretty good, I hear. Jadonix for these guys. Throw a couple more probes out. What's your location? Okay. And then for here, we have to think about how we're going to boost our. cash content. So one of the ways is by enacting Super Tax Act. Speaking of which, when do we get a new colony? That's going to be seven turns? All right. So we'll try to remember that. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and do activate Super Tax Act, which only gets us to 120. Not exactly where I want it to be. Out of curiosity. Okay. Oh, yeah, because they lose the Lumeris bonuses. Mm, 
now you see they're only content, so I actually lost uh probably lost more gold than I gained because it's civilization wide. Okay. Well, we don't want to build an analytical engine. Because I'm gonna be building a trade headquarters there. And that's gonna be much more important. So we just need more population here, really. Um that's going to be the, the biggest thing that gets us more peeps. Okay. And so it wants us to colonize there really badly, which I will be happy to. Uh, and then next is we want to keep selling this stuff so that we can actually do that colonization there. One and 350. And we're going to have them come from Leodan, our little outpush, our outpost shop. Which now is not growing, sure, but that's not really that important. Leodan doesn't need to grow that much. It's not giving us a lot by growing. Its job is just to spit out and support outposts while letting our other stuff grow. Hmm. Boom, Obelisk of Remembrance. Okay. So now he's upgraded. And these like per population ones are never that great. Um so I'm going to actually just give him his seeker skills, which are just always fantastic. little savanna out here in the boonies and then we want to get this place this is going to be this forest boreal is going to be our little gift pretty soon all right so from a laws perspective we definitely want to kill super tax act and we're going to go with uh, mineral misers because it'll give a nice boost to like these guys and boost this, our overall uh, production of stuff here. Also, we need more of our uh, dust trees. Yeah, I guess taking over that place would be a decent idea there. But we definitely want to profit from the development grants, so let's try to get these places instead. Oh, we've been taken over by uh, the Unfallen here. So, 156 science in one system. We gain another population next turn. Well, let's see what we can do with that. I don't know if we'll be able to do much better. It's a huge forest there. This is actually a nice little spot for a pirate settlement. In my experience, the pirate settlements have been crap so far. Come on. Come on. There you go. All right, so we're well on our way here. Hmm, let's take a step back. So next turn, we're gonna have commercial frameworks which means we can start building our um, building our trade headquarters. And we're gaining a ton of dust every turn, which I love. 
Oh wow. Titanium is really valued in the universe right now. So 1.1 thousand. Does that give us enough to colonize here? Oh, it does. So this is going to be 8, this is going to be 6. So we'll colonize the forest, obviously, to go faster. And then we'll be able to already upgrade it next turn. Um, and actually, you know what? With two of these guys around, we may even want to... Do we have three colonies, actually? Three colonies. We should actually institute the plus 30% colony growth law next turn. And this one should be pulling, yeah, it's pulling from nothing, because this is that off-piste colony that I was talking about. So hooray for that. over Nukashan, Nusakan. Oh, look at that. Jade Onyx. A forest and a Terran. Wow. All right, I gotta put some meat together to fight against these pirates. The trade colony is gonna take 10. I think it's gonna be fine to uh, finish this stuff first. So that'll give five bonus. Um, ten. So then four is going to be twenty. So I can get up to yeah, it's not going to be that high. <laughs> not until I build this. Well, um, Will I be able to trigger it? Ugh, but I really don't want to do it until after my trade HQ. My trade HQ is just way too important. That's a bummer. Usually I don't have that much trouble hitting the, uh, hitting the 150 mark. Discovered the planet Sahar. Arid that gives 20 industry per turn. Wowie, wow, wow. A bunch of red sang. Reveals all of the hidden isolated nodes near this constellation. Cool. Check this out. We've got a boreal hidden in there. A huge forest off on its own with a desert. Okay. I love this one. And then uh, an arid and a savanna with blue cap molds. Ancient ruins over there. On both of them. Wow. All right. And we forgot to do this one before. Okay, and so now we're doing mineral misers, but we don't need to be doing that. What we should be doing instead is new colony. Plus 30% uh, outpost growth. And so that means that this will go even faster. Because we're getting, yep, <clears throat> an extra 8 per turn from that guy. And then here too. <clears throat> so in 4 turns, that's going to mature. And in nine turns over here. Nine turns still. Come on. All right. Well, so the snapper can't fight by itself, but we'll have it go over here. And this guy can come. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. He has to get over to Nusakan eventually. But I might want to upgrade him first. Alright, and then you. Not doing anything. No research. 
So, from a research perspective, I think it's time that we pick up something in this tree. Um, yeah, Xenobiology, not that important. We do want new heroes, but we're going to be able to get to the Academy not so long from now. And that's going to be one turn. Holy crap, our science. Alright, so then we'll do ubiquitous surveillance, or we can do adaptive bureaucracies which gives us the ability to unlock Baron and kind of get us closer to some of these things. And it gives us a new law slot. So that's what I'm thinking here, actually, is that getting a new law slot is pretty nice. So let's do botanical scanning. That'll get us a new law slot. Um, move that piece forward a little bit, and then we'll do a little bit on military. Efficient shielding. Okay. Nusicon has three people already. That's really solid. Oh! I have a guardian, no wonder. Okay. Huh. Let's go ahead and do that. Guardian Harvest. Hmm. Cool. Wow. This science is ridonculous. We're going to make the snapper. And we're going to send him down here so he can join up. Maybe we even upgrade that ship. Searching some curiosities, but not a ton. A dark glitter price drop. Well, we already used our dark glitter for what we needed it for. Alright, but what I'm thinking here is. Hmm, oh, so that's one of the academy possibilities. Is that right? Why is Tylus pinging? Masters of the Arena. Yeah, so that one we failed, actually. Prophecy of Doom. Find the Academy. That's the one that I'm interested in right now. Yeah, so it wants us to check out Tylus and some other places, but I'm pretty sure that Tylus does not have the Academy on it, because I can see it. Hundred eleven, five turns more. Scene tourism does not help me so much here. No, it's really only the analytical engine that will help. Which is unfortunate. Who's sending fleets to new skin? Oh, Eureka. Got a random technology. Great. An extra law. What technology did we get? Do we know? Oh, we got 
planetary landscaping, which is fine. I'm happy to have gotten planetary landscaping. So Xenoanthro is important, but not critical. I think that where we want to go next is actually towards... Holy shit, I just blow through that so quick. Um, yeah, it's to go towards some military stuff. So like, let's grab ubiquitous surveillance and then also agri drugs for my enhanced drevs. Which I could get in, wow, so fast. All right, 330 a turn there. Okay. You know what? For these two guys, I think spending an extra 100 to, uh, that'll be a little bit more actually, to max them out to potentially um, just use influence to conquer them is going to be a pretty good plan. Alright, and then so where are we on? Right, so we're at loyal. I'm trying to think. Do we do toys for boys? That'll only drop this by like 3% or something like that, but it gives a nice boost to influence food, gold, and dust for the whole empire. Yeah, I think we'd do that. It's time for Toys for Boys. Because now we're going to be devoted, which means we're going to have plus 25, oh, plus 30 now, not 25. So it really doubles it. Wow. Okay. So we're even up to plus 377. We only lost one turn there. So, and we can get like 25 extra food in three turns out of this thing. Yeah, we have like no luxury deposits though. Hmm, excuse me there. 120 science. Yeah, but now instead of growing in five, we grow in three, which I'm happy about for sure. Oh, that's right. The snapper is different. Um, okay. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Subterraneans and atmospherics, that's Savannah. I just want all of these planets, all these systems. I want them, I want them, I want them. Oh! Well, let me just waste some dust there, because we discovered the lab means we now own these guys' ships. Okay. So yeah, let's colonize that thing. It's pretty good for an ash planet. Um, but yeah, you see, like, they lose so much by ha being on there, so we can jump them onto the ash. And then what have they not got? So they didn't do any of the basics. And you know what we should do? We should grab Savannah. Baryonic shielding. Because that, like, we need Bill Gelly and a bunch of other things there. Let's do... Actually, 
We don't need ubiquitous for anything, so let's just change that around. We don't need it next turn, at least. We could actually use the Savannah. This place could actually be great. Like, look at that industry hub. And Savannahs are okay, but they can be improved later. So, hooray! I'm very pleased with that assimilation. And then we're going to send this guy down here to fight... Oh, we didn't even look at these pirates. 189. Yeah, so we should be good there. Ooh, wow. And those guys are pretty strong. But we will be ratcheting our way up the tech tree right quick. In order to go get them. All right, there's that, new population type. So what, oh, is it because, no, that guy's coming from Leo. So where is, who's pulling from Nusakan? You're pulling from Leo. There shouldn't be any ships going th through Nusakan. Right, because Leo's ships could be go should be going like that. Mm, blows me away. Color me confused. Is all I have to say about that. All right, Leo did their thing. Da -da -da. of a curiosity there. Ugh, you totally stopped and grabbed it. That's okay, we'll use the caravel. Go grab that curiosity. You don't have the probe. Of course you don't have a probe. Why would you have a probe? That would be silly. Oh, I think, because it's the new ones. Awesome. Yeah, because I just got the uh, upgraded thing. All right. So this should be happening really soon, like next turn. Fantastic. And then we're going to be able to benefit from the new colony buff. We'll deactivate toys for boys. <sighs> yeah, this is going okay. Normally at 26, I want to be better. I think in my previous video I was much better off, but this is a much slower start, right? Having only one um, level 0, level 1 planet in the starting position and nothing immediately apparent in the early game. It's a tougher start, but it's a good one. So I'm happy to see this from the perspective of an expert guide for how to play in Lumeris. It's good to not always have it start super easy. Um, alright, so next here, let's go for, I guess we'll just build another one of these snappers, because I don't really want to build any of these things right now. So. Well, from a point perspective, I'm actually almost in the lead. Wow, I don't have any business being in the lead. Alright, and we should definitely colonize Bill Gelly right away. And then build those things. Okay, so there's squat over there. So then we'll just move our way that way. And you will just stay there for now. You will stay there for now. Other guys on the way. 
Hmm. So I really need to do a better job with my core mission. Yay, Alioth. So Leo has also been targeted for a pirate contract, eh? Hmm, adamantium. Okay, and so... Battle at Antares. So what have they got? They've got mostly physical damage. I am... Long-range missiles. Okay, so I should just definitely do that one. So I stay at long range. And then I can crush them. Alright. So, what have they got going on there? They've got 450 guys. How many have I got? I've got... 100 per, so I've got 300 guys. So that means I'm going to need tanks if I want to make a difference there. I think it's alt click puts it in the front. Yeah. Alt click puts it in the front. Eukaryotic sap would also not be bad right now. Exploitation of adamantine, also not bad. All right. Let's do it like this for now. These guys are giving me probably a bunch of stuff. Yep. Hmm. 156. I don't have that many turns left. I got another population next turn, so that's nice. If I'm going to make a move, I need to make a move. I don't think anyone, any of these other guys can meet that demand. Oh, and then the other thing we should look at here <clears throat> is that I have so much bonus right now because I have the 35 from the colonized system and the 30 from Toys for Boys, so I definitely don't need Toys for Boys anymore. I can take Mineral Misers or even Super Tax, which I think I will take, because that'll get me a little bit closer to my 130 or 150. Just a little bit closer. Is that neutral now? That gives me two more. So let's see what happens with my, when I have one more guy next turn. It's a Lumeris, so that'll be that's good. Yeah, they give plus four, base is four, so that's eight extra. They're still not quite there, guys. Hmm. Dislike. Alright, what, what should I be doing with my cash? Let's not get distracted here. So right now, cash, I have how many systems in play? Four, five, six, seven. So I'm at my seven system cap already without, uh, without assimilating these guys. So you see how quickly this system cap comes up. Yikes. So what I should probably be doing, oh, it's a med. Ugh, I hate Mediterraneans. Uh, so that means we'll do Drone Network first. Drone Network and Cerebral will come right away. So that means that what I need to be doing is... Have they built the plus food per hot and cold? That's going to be a good one. 
better than drone networks for sure. Probably better than cerebral. Yeah, let's get them on that one right away. So this comatite volcano, I remember being really good. Yeah, four. Wow. So that's going to be like as good as the ash. Ooh. 11253 versus 41260. Yeah, so we, everyone's going to come over to Virac 3. And places the bomb. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Okay, so we've got both snappers here now. Which are decent fighting ships. Not super impressive, but decent. <sighs> da -da -da -da. New tech stage unlocked. Oh, it gives us... I didn't realize this before. So this is another big update to the way that the military works, that you get a bunch of basic defense modules by just manning up. Or by just leveling up your stage. How curious. Yeah, so as I'm thinking here is that do I want to colonize this arid in Bundus? Or do I want to leave it alone? With the pirates there, I think I want to leave it alone for now. The more interesting one is probably that giant forest um, that was over here in the Rookbot. Yeah. This area is just... It's going to be good to have a little far out destination there. Uh, and we don't have to sell, we don't have to really sell too much stuff. How much are we gaining of these now for a turn? Great. So. Yeah, let's end the turn. Is that a pirate fleet there? Uh oh. They're coming to hang out with me. One fifty six. Luckily I have this Guardian here, which is uh, pretty good at defending. I discovered a Neris Civ. Alright. So I'll do two praises on them to get five, and then we'll uh, do some curiosity. Oh wow, they have so many. Yeah, ruins. I'm all about that. The nearest are good. Uh, beams. They changed beams as well mm, from a military perspective since last time I was active in this game. Alright, and then we're basically ready to wind down this stage. So, how are we on score? I got not first, but close. So, we're in, we're in a close second here. A leap above everybody else. Still pissed off about not being able to get over the hump with these guys. Right? Like, so close. We need one more person. It really makes me want to just build the sustainable farms to get there. I just want to get there, you guys. Okay, 
So what I was trying to do before is check. Okay, those guys have 500 power. How much does mine have? Like, well, I guess 400. 400 with just the two snappers? Okay, but that caravel is like... Booty. It's booty. Let's, uh, let's upgrade these things. So like... We got this thing which is much better than this one even. Yeah. So let's give them that, and let's do a little bit of mixed. So the sync laser is best in mid range. Interesting. Yeah, so we'll give them the slugs. I think so. Apply that design. Upgrade. And for the snapper, yeah, it doesn't really need to be changed. So merge that together. Okay, so I don't know where the previous numbers I was looking at were coming from. Oh, I was looking at their ships. Right. -o. All right, so we're going to piece the fuck out of there. Because we're going to get smushed if we stay in fight. These guys are 189, we're 450, so my guys there can keep fighting. And then we'll go ahead and go to turn 30. So, autonomous construction. Got our first pacification thing. Shield wall is what we're going to be doing here. Oh, well, they've got a pincer with long range missiles, which is basically what we've got. Nice, but we've got some guns there. So, as we look at this, we only have two options, right? These pirate ships only have two choices for the uh, their things. So they're going to do shield wall, yeah, which is, I think, the same thing we're doing. Our last option to use by your opponent. Okay, so we're going to stay at long range, fight their two ships. This one sucks at long range anyway. So we even survived because they tried to stay at long range. We had three good ships there. The location of the academy has been revealed. Did I do that? I didn't reveal the academy. Someone else did. Someone much cooler than me. One fifty three. No, we had a Mavros run over here. All right. Welcome to the team, Mavros, buddy. I think that we'll still stick it around like that and get that boost. Uh, that boost. Which I would like. And we're going to go ahead and pay 100 to just get that faster so that we can maybe integrate those guys. Because, the, as I said, the integration bonus is just so high. If we can't hit the 150 mark here. But yeah, we'll do this. Um, we're going to keep that up for now because we want to stay above 150 to trigger our quest. So that's awesome. We should be able to trigger said quest this turn. Subterranean, life forms, and atmospherics. We'll do the subbed. Got some antimatter. Nice. All right, and then let's go do the last turn and call this a day for now. There we go, Black Tax Authority. Now I can build 30% dust in my home system. 
now I have to choose this one, right? Ecologists or industrialists. And I'm going to choose ecologists because I get the sweet law that gives plus 25 uh, industry if I'm ecstatic. Discovered the Harashems down there. All right. I get a guy, a colony in two turns. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to do this turn. Because it's not going to, like, we're, we'll finish turn 30 and then we'll call it. The first thing is we got autonomous construction, which, by the way, is this guy, which gives you tanks. So in our ground combat, as we go to here, the way this works is that tanks get plus 50% against infantry, infantry get plus 50% against air, and air get plus 50% against tanks. Oh, no, they don't say that anymore. Interesting. They just destroy more improvements in population. Curious. And do a ton of damage. Very curious. Any case, um, so in the early game when everyone's using infantry, using a bunch of tanks is the way to go. Is what it comes down to. And that little boost there will make my guys a lot stronger. So we're going to go 100% tanks. And then these guys here, I told you before that they had to worry about the fact that there were, oh nice, that there were 450 guys down in this pirate base, and they only had 300, right? They each have 100 guys. But now, they have 20 tanks, which is way better than, so 300 units of tanks, which is better than 430 units of infantry. So it's still close, but if we keep coming out and we'll, uh, so actually one more thing, let's talk briefly about combat for those of you guys that uh, haven't done it before. So the way combat works is we have manpower, manpower goes into the ships, but in addition to the total manpower that you have and the manpower that's in the fleet, right, we just talked about that kind of, so the fleet manpower is 360 or sorry, 300 out of 600 here. Um, so if this 300 is in the fleet, 600 is the amount of manpower that can be deployed, I think. 600 seems a little high, but let's check it out. So in here, we should be able to find somewhere where the manpower deployment goes up, like here, da, 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 da. One of these. Okay, there we go. Ah, so it's probably keyed to these these things. Okay, so we just got a plus 100 manpower deployment limit. Yeah, so that's why we're at 100 extra. So we just got coordinated command. Um, so well, the pirates can only deploy. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Um, so this is why they can deploy 500 guys, we can deploy 600 guys, because we have that, and so if we do preemptive bombing, we'll reduce our deployment limit by 25%, but we'll do a bunch of extra damage to the ground, to the defender. Um, so that's what, exactly what we're going to do. We're going to deal a bunch of extra damage to him, and it doesn't actually impact our, our deployment limits, because the limit will be only 25% less than 600. So it's still like in the 400s. So we were going to fight, and we get a minor victory. We take out a ton of his guys. And then we just uh, will be doing that over time. And being patient. Meanwhile, these guys, now that they're back here, might as well discover this. Take a look at our adamantium there. Extra vision, don't really care. So a thought that I have here is that there is one way to go get the um, the Hisho guys. 
and that's to colonize ice. Oh gosh, that's too many turns. Too many turns, I'm afraid. Um, because if I got the ice colonization, then I could just throw a bunch of guys over here, and that would definitely pump me up to 30, or to uh, 150. Which I will want to do eventually, just not now. Definitely go for the Black Tax Authority. Um, ba -dum -ba -bum. And you, you don't need to do anything. You guys don't need to do anything. So then we have a bunch of cash. And I think that because things are going pretty well, we are going to go ahead and play around with this giant forest. Which seems interesting. So, yeah, it takes 550 to... There we go. 550 to pay for this. So we'll sell that re extra red sang that we had, which is basically of no value. And, uh, yeah, we'll boost that. And because we're growing so fast, 20 turns. And uh, I think that then we're going to be done. Low manpower. Ooh, plus two Calgaros. Now we've got our quest line. So this is why it was so important to put industrialists in power. Because like now look at this. We need three industrialist laws for ten turns. Jesus. So battle here gonna bomb them again and now we're winning enormously yes we're gonna get the hell out of there oh those are our friends the Narashan or the nearest man I guess they uh, they were not happy with us all right, so with those two new Calgaros, oh, we're still not at, um, not at max, but, or not at enough science, but that's okay. That is okay. So we'll get, we're six turns away from our trade company, which is, yeah, decent, decently okay to start. A few, few turns behind where it would be in an optimal state, but definitely respectable. We just picked up another Lumeris, finished a ton of stuff this turn. And, yeah, I feel okay about where we are. Hopefully you guys have learned something about how the game works now, and this is, uh, like, a nice updated um yeah update to our our year old guides i'd be curious to hear your thoughts about how this one went and if you're still having fun with endless space 2 the game is in a pretty fun state for me still like this part right where we're just kind of optimizing and playing around uh in the early stages is pretty fun to me and we're just at the stage where we're about to break out right the uh the development grants that we have going on here. Mm, oh, I have actually fallen off, haven't they? Yes, indeed. No more development grants. So just kind of doing a check-in. Without development grants, we're at 300 science a turn. Um, 350... Sorry, 300 dust, 350 science. With our top systems making 130 industry a turn, and then two with 90, uh, and a total number of systems of nine, including two minor sieves, um, giving us 
Yep, concentrated constructors, and what's the other thing that we got in? From the Virac. I forget what they give. It should be right here, isn't it? Did we not get an assimilation trait from them? Faction trait. No? Hmm. Well, though, I don't know. I don't know. I thought that we would have gotten an assimilation trait and assimilation trait from them. But I might be mistaken. Regardless, hope you guys enjoyed. And I know this is a long video, um, but I really appreciate your comments and and pointing out things that I did wrong. So because it helps everybody who's watching these videos and learning to play the game and uh, trying to maximize their play. So um, until next time, see you guys later, and it's uh, good to be back. Cheers.